that supposed to mean? Cabaret audiences demanded and got direct reference to current events. The excitement of what was happening in the streets was mirrored on the cabaret stage as specific criticism. Cabaret had attitude, what the Berliners called schnauze, an impudent, ironic take on life. As the pressures of Nazi incursion forced cabaret out of its usual venues, the cheeky, irrepressible urge to say no thrived among emigres, fugitives, resistance workers, and even in concentration camps. But to many of them, it must have seemed that not the edge, the end of the world. Six million Jews destroyed, a third of all the Jewish population of the world, more than half the Jews in Europe. Their instruments are broken. We shall play their music. Their voices are silenced. We shall sing their songs and tell their jokes. May their spirits rejoice to hear them. Before the Nazis came to power, the cabarets, like educated people at large, were slow to take them seriously. It was too easy to dismiss the lumping brown shirts, bigoted burgers, a leader who looked like Charlie Chaplin and sounded like Donald Duck. <laughs> the Nazi need to charge the Jews with the responsibility for everything wrong was seen not so much as lethal as Meshuggahnet. <laughs> obsession was racial purity, and Jews were portrayed as lecherous and sex offenders eager to besmirch German womanhood. Jew, I'll bet you're planning to defile pure Aryan womanhood. Jew, tell me what time it is. Jew, I ask you a question. How dare you ignore me? Well, if you can interpret the frick in my pants, you can certainly read the watch in my pocket. <laughs> in 1933, the Third Reich passed the so-called Nuremberg Laws, denying civil rights to anyone with Jewish blood. To be German was to be Aryan. Two months later, the Hoyrigge duo in Vienna sang this ballad by Victor Barassi, living and loving in the Third Reich, which remained in their repertory for 12 years, even in exile. He checks out her features, he's fully employed, and makes sure that about her there's nothing negroid. He admires her fair hair, which has special appeal. The dresses are fake, but the blondness is real. He checks next to see if her teeth are too funny. 
that brown like his shirt so he knows he's not a fool. The <laughs> whole <laughs> race flow to take the state test, where everything racial is assessed and processed. Race clerk pronounces, let me make this clear, our women must give birth to two kids a year. An objection, this goes beyond border. But the race clerk expostulates, orders is orders. <laughs> German can often be nice and no threat, but four always form a string of a quartet. At a banner, a brass band, and who step at least, the Germans require it or else know no peace. Drill troops and make war, that's what they like to do, to chop the thing off all that's missing. A Jew. Workers at Jafra Cabaret, usually staffed by amateurs, fought against National Socialist doctrine with its own mockery. The Red Rats of Dresden, a socialist group founded in 1926, was particularly active. This sketch, There's a Draft, is from their 1932 review, Despite It All. Have you ever heard of Adolf Hitler? That's just what I was going to ask you. You were, were you? I can give you proof positive. I'm a National Socialist! You're a National Socialist? I'm a National Socialist! Have you ever heard Hitler speak? Hitler is the spokesman of the underprivileged. You're talking rot. Hitler is spokesman for economic common sense. He is mindful of the concerns of the managerial class, for only a sound economy, free from its change, can provide the cure! You talk like a Jewish banker. How huh, Hitler? And you talk like a Marxist. Heil Hitler! You're trying to tell me about National Socialism. I'm a squad leader from Pishin, and we Pishers have a good sense of what Hitler wants. He lives and dies for the proletariat. Hitler lives and dies for a sound improvement in private property. So I will move that you be expelled from the party. Whatever you stand for, it's not Hitler. No, you must go. You stand for the Reds! Why should I sit here and listen to this nonsense? about Hitler. There's a draft, and I want to close the window. It is stuffy in this room, and the window will remain open. The window will be closed. It will remain open! Now you've broken the window. You broke it. The Nazi slaughter created an overflow of orphans in the ghetto, many of whom had to fend for themselves on the streets of Warsaw, Vilna, and Woj. Smuggling food into the ghetto from the city and selling it was one way to survive. A coat without a collar, galoshes with no shoes. There's room inside my pants for two or three. And if you think that's funny, well, mister, I've got news. Conditions. 
and often under direct order from camp officials. The ugly realities of camp life were turned on their head to provoke laughter and regain dignity. But laughter in the gas chamber? The British playwright Peter Barnes imagined such a thing in his play, Laughter. Sometimes laughter can become the only reaction to events too terrible to contemplate in any other way. The farewell appearance of the Bafo boys of Birkenau, Abe Bimko and Jaime Bieberstein. Bimko and Bieberstein! Boyne Litvinov just died. Well, if he had the chance to better himself. <laughs> <laughs> Drank a whole bottle of varnish. Awful sight, but a beautiful finish. <laughs> 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 According to the latest statistics, one man dies in this camp every time I breathe. Did you try toothpaste? Oh, the dental officer said my teeth were fine, only the gums have to come out. Be grateful. The doctor told Fleischmann he needed to lose 10 pounds of ugly fit, so they cut off his head. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Gracias. 